having some of the choir members sing and doing a blessing of anybody who wants to attend there. If you're in the area, we do invite you to come and worship with us for a few minutes at the Pride Tent at 4 o'clock. Yep. And so also, just wanted to share with you that people from our church have been participating in Pride events throughout the week. And one of the ones outside of the parade that had the most attendance and meaning was the Light of the Cathedral event at St. Paul's. There were over 500 people present from the community, and a bunch of clergy and religious leaders processed in, and it was a powerful moment to be LGBT in, in, in history at this, this point. Um, also coming up, we're privileged to have uh, the heart and expertise of Reverend Kat, Kat Fana Simmel, among us. She consistently expands our understanding and broadens our ability to be of service to all of God's beloved people. So this coming Saturday, we partnered to offer the Mental Health First Aid Training Program to our community. It's an eight-hour certification course designed to give you tools needed to respond to psychiatric or mental health emergencies <coughs> until a trained professional can show up. And so you can just RSVP to me, and I'll make sure you have enough materials. We'll be excited to see you there. Next week is also a special occasion uh, with two significant events. First of all, we will come together to celebrate the ministry and retirement of Lynn Malone, who's been with us for over 20 years of service. Thank you. 
wonder to display your likeness. You bestow upon our senses such amazing gifts every day of our lives, and this is a testament to your generosity. This week has been a days long celebration of our diversity and our freedom, an expression of pride in ourselves and in our standing in the greater community. May each of us be aware of this at this moment that we are a part of that beauty we just sang about a few moments ago on Friday. We are not just observers of your wondrous beauty. We are a part of it. We are not incidental to the process of creation. We are co-creators with you. We need not simply marvel at the beauty that is around us. We are overcome with the knowledge that we are woven into the fabric of your creation. And that creation is all the more beautiful because of us. God, you have called us from all backgrounds and persuasions to stand alongside one another as a community of faith. Indeed, you have called all people everywhere to celebrate one another and to see one another through your eyes. And we truly have more in common than keeps us apart. From the coal miner in West Virginia, to the software engineer in San Francisco, from the teacher in Des Moines, to the civil engineer in Phoenix, from the investment banker in New York City, to the factory worker in Ohio, we are more alike than we sometimes realize. We are embraced by you, celebrated by you, and loved by you. And it is incumbent upon each and every one of us to view those whom we encounter, who we may consider the other through your eyes, to embrace them with your arms, to celebrate them as you do, and to find common ground with all who share our world. God, as we continue through the rest of this weekend to take to the streets and celebrate pride, may you keep us all safe, and may you remind us that pride, the pride we celebrate is not that haughty, holier-than-thou kind that leads to destruction. The pride we're celebrating is the calm assurance that comes of being at peace with oneself and one's place in this world. We are proud to be who we are, and we are proud to be whose we are. May the message of this church reach thousands at the festival. And may all who are open to relationship with you come to know that there is a place and a home for them here at this church. May each of the contingents from yesterday's parade who represent a faith community also be blessed with an increase in their numbers. For we long for all people everywhere to experience your love in our church or any church. May your rainbow realm be stronger today and more resilient because of this weekend. And may the love of our Savior be so stirred in each of us to the degree that we look at our neighbor and say in our heart of hearts to you, how great thou art. And now we ask that you'll come alongside us and dwell with us as we recite the prayer that you taught us, saying, our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Thank you.
this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is in, seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on earth. This is the message. Praise to you, Creator Christ and Holy Spirit. Driving on parade convertibles for 45 years. 
truck with all the sound. Thank you very much for that. And then we have the festival going on right now, and then the interstage fate at 4 o'clock this afternoon. And I hope that if you are at the festival, that you can come and you can just support us. And uh, it's going to be loud with all the Latin music on one side and the dance floor on the other side. And we're going to be right in the middle of it all. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I think it's great. I think it's just fabulous. Well, how wonderful to celebrate our love for one another and our love for God in all of our wholeness in our wonderful and our fabulous and our strong and our amazing and our blessed and our authentic selves. And I believe when we bring all of ourselves into worship before God, it really is worship to God, just letting ourselves be as we are. We celebrate equality. We celebrate diversity this Pride weekend. And what better symbol to capture all of that than the rainbow flag? How cool. I love that that is a symbol. If you look around, you can see we are a rainbow people here this morning. We are part of a rainbow coalition. And the rainbow is a natural occurrence. You see it a lot in Hawaii, don't you? It is just the perfect climate conditions for that and beautiful settings all the time. But simply put, it's light refracted and dispersed by millions of little droplets of water in the sky. <laughs> That's all a rainbow is. And yet it's so meaningful to us as a community. And in sacred literature, it symbolizes some pretty amazing things. For example, in Genesis chapter 9, there's a story about a great flood. We know about it. It did not stop raining for 40 days and 40 nights. And it seemed like it would never end. You know what it is like that when we've got storms in our own lives? When we're going through difficult times and it feels like it's never, ever going to end. Can't we have a sunny day? Can't the rain stop? Can't things start going my way? How come, God, right, we get into that thing and it feels like it's got this heaviness on top of us? I tell you, when the storm was passing, a rainbow appeared in that sky. And I think it is ironic that the rainbow appears brighter when the storm clouds are the darkest. Yeah. Hold on to that. I love that the rainbow in the sky is a sign of hope. And it's also a sign of our connection with the divine source of all things. Even the prophet Ezekiel later envisioned the glory of God, the glory of God as a rainbow in the sky. A rainbow, many brilliant co colors, overarching a, the brilliant diversity of God's creation. And I like to think about that. We are underneath that rainbow. We are God's creation that is underneath that rainbow. The rainbow people as symbol of inclusivity and of light and bright hope. And in Revelation, that very imaginative and creative writer saw in their mind the presence of God, whatever the presence of God looks like, but they saw it as being surrounded by what? A rainbow. That's the way that they could describe the presence of God. And again, this writer imagined the angel of God being wrapped in clouds, face shining like the sun, and the angel was surrounded by a rainbow again. So the rainbow image is one that we've adopted for our community. And how wonderful that despite being told by our current administration to not fly the rainbow during Pride months in the different embassies around the world, I love that the U.S. embassies flew it anyway. They raised that Source 
and substance of the entire universe expresses as light and diversity and hope and beauty. And you and I are made in that same image. We are made in God's image. And we are indeed a rainbow people. And this year, all over the world, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Riot. We've heard about it over and over again in the news. How many millions of people went to Stonewall, actually, in New York City to celebrate that? And it happened something like this. I'll refresh your memory. On the night of June 27th, in the early morning hours of June 28th, 1969, in the West Village of New York City, I tell you what, a rainbow revolution broke out. We've seen those shirts. Pride started as a riot. Stonewall story is what it's called. And it was in this country that the LGBT communities shot, heard around the world, started right there at Stonewall. Here's a little history. Stonewall was a bar that was not gay owned, but it catered to gay people, homeless, youth, drag performers, cross dressers, transgender people, and blue collar gays and le lesbians. All walks of life were in this bar, and this bar was raided by the New York City police, just without notice. And these raids were common. They just happened. There are people sitting here that remember going to the bars and, and being raided. And you can talk. Patty's got some great stories about, was it Minneapolis? Were you there? Yeah. Ask her about what it was like back in the day and what they had to do when the police would actually come in to the building. And these raids were common, but on this particular night, with this particular group of people, at this particular bar, they refused to take the harassment any longer. They were done. One legend says that because gay icon Judy Garland had died less than a week earlier, her huge funeral services had just concluded that maybe her devotees, how many are devotees of Judy Garland here, were just a little bit extra raw that night. Well, that can't be verified, but something happened that night that would forever change history. And I think it's fitting on this day, this Pride Sunday, that we sing what is our anthem somewhere over the rainbow. Come on, let's sing it. Would you join with me? As we just fill up, let's just fill up this place with the somewhere over the rainbow and how beautiful that is. Somewhere.
the police were attacking, and they started to round people up for the paddy wagon, like they did. But the unheard of up until then happened. Because what happened was, the queers fought back. <laughs> they said, no more! They chanted, and they screamed, and they threw rocks and bottles. They lit garbage on fire. And as police were dealing with one group of riders, another group would come along and behind them and just continue it and continue it. And like I like one description. The Stonewall troops included trannies and drag queens. And while the police swung their nightsticks, there were wigs and false eyelashes and leaf press on nails flying through the air. And for our community, it was the rocket's red glare. And it's amazing how when people dare to stand up for themselves, when they claim their self-worth and their dignity, and they believe that it's worth fighting for, what a difference it can make. And at that same time in US history, there was a lot of things going on, women's liberation, civil rights, anti-war, and many other movements that were demanding change, all happening simultaneously. Perhaps it was this spirit of revolution that was just in the air. How many of you remember the 60s? Yeah. It was just like that. Whatever the case may be, LGBT people were heard, and they were seen, and they would never again, let me say that again, we would never again be completely silenced or completely visible again. And almost a year earlier though, with all of this, with all of this celebration that's going on, all of this press, there was another counter-cultural, under-the-radar, world-changing event that was taking place. It was in the fall of 1968, almost eight months earlier, a defrocked Pentecostal minister started a church to celebrate and empower the same gender loving people. And he started this so that it would, in course, include allies. And we are so grateful for our allies that are here today as part of our church.
The question came up, is MCC still relevant and needed today? With so many churches who are welcoming and affirming coming along. And our new moderator, Reverend Cecilia Eggleston, said this. Yes, with all of the different churches and organizations that are having internal wars, actually, that's doing church splits, but they're trying to let people in, all of us. She said this. MCC is the only church that was created for me. Isn't that powerful? MCC is the only church, the only denomination that was created just for me. So let's never forget the cutting edge agent of change that MCC always has been and continues to be and must continue to be. And remember, before Stonewall, there was MCC. Before Stonewall, there was MCC. And that's something that we can be very proud of on this Pride Sunday. Our mission is to help bring people closer to God and one another wherever you are on your spiritual path. And many of us know that what it feels like to be Bible-bashed, to be beat over the head by the Bible, to be beaten up spiritually. And this year... As a church, we're reading through the Bible. And it's powerful to do this again as a congregation. Because in my mind, and I think for so many other people, we are reclaiming the Bible for ourselves. And it's a beautiful thing to reclaim it. And it's powerful and it's liberating when we can say, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. We can see it right there in the Bible. Friends, We're all children of God. We're made in God's image. When God created you, God said, "Mm, mm, mm." You are very good. And we are filled with God's spirit. And we're part of that creation that creator God makes. It's under the umbrella of the rain. So on this Pride Sunday and every day, let's let our colors shine brightly. Let's let our light shine brightly. Even in the darkest of storms, we can shine brightly, knowing that we are rainbow children of God. We love it. Happy Pride, everybody. Thank you for
said, anytime you die, anytime you need anything, anytime you just need love, look up. God's love checks your name. Amen. I see you body breaking. I see your fingers bleeding. I see the darkness tremble around me. Lord. And in the darkest hour.
your love does change everything. May you empower what people wrote in the Keep Them In Touch cards, and may every need be met. And may the resources that we have pooled together here achieve mighty things to change everything, to change this world into a place that's more characterized by love, by generosity, by grace. Thank you for drawing us together as a rainbow coalition empowered to make a difference in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of the beautiful things of the way that this church was started in living room was to have Holy Communion and that it be open for everybody. So we celebrate that today. And I invite you to open up your hearts and join me in the great Thanksgiving. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing both now and always to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Now we join our voices with those angels with those things who have already gone on before us, as together we sing that never-ending song of praise. Song.
union. And what that means is that we don't have to be a member here or anywhere. It's an open table set by the risen Christ, inviting everyone to new resurrected life. So it's our tradition that we'll invite you forward with an usher to a communion server at the front of the sanctuary who will take a wafer, dip it in grape juice, offer it to you to serve yourself, and then pray a prayer of blessing for you. After which you can return to your seats and continue to take pride in the God who we serve and the God who loves us. We just ask that you come as you are.